Kingsway, thanks so much for tuning in and checking this video out. Uh, we have something a little different, a little special planned for you today. In fact, I would tell you whether you are watching this alone uh, on your couch, on your phone, or maybe you've got this up on your TV for your whole family to watch, um, I will tell you, you're going to need to participate today. Uh, this little uh, Christmas Eve Eve kind of Christmas service that we're kind of putting out for you, it's intentional. It's going to be engaging. It's going to be something you're going to get a chance to participate in. And if you don't participate, I think you're going to miss out on what this could be. The goal of this today is to give you a chance to participate in the Christmas story, to bring some joy, to have some fun, uh, to bring to bring to life some of the things that we've talked about uh, through our series, The Fruits of Christmas, but also just through the Christmas season itself. This Advent idea that Jesus has come and he will come back again and we anticipate and are excited for that time and celebrating the fact that our God did come and did save us through his son and the way that he did through the empty tomb and the empty cross, which is amazing. So that being said, I want to tell you the first thing that we're going to do right off the bat, this is a fun way, get your blood flowing. So whether you're alone, again, whether you're watching this you know, on a phone, in your bed, on a couch, whether it's Christmas morning itself and you're checking it out, whether it's Christmas Eve, whatever time, whatever day, I want you to do something for me. And this is how we're going to start it. You are going to go Christmas caroling. All right. Now don't freak out. All right. Don't freak out. We're doing this 2020 style. All right. So what we're going to have you do is jump on a, maybe it's FaceTime, maybe it's Facebook Messenger, maybe it's Zoom. But you are going to call a family member, a close friend, uh, someone that you know, an acquaintance, and you are going to sing them a Christmas carol. All right, so you're just going to call them up, and as soon as they pick up, you are going to break into Jingle Bells. You are going to break into Silent Night. You are going to break into your best favorite Christmas carol, and you're going to do it right now. So you're just going to pick it up, call them, boom, no explanations, no, no, no need to justify anything. Just boom, do it, and let that be something as a smile. Start a conversation, spread a little joy, put a smile on their face. And let it be the first thing that you, you participate, you sing out, you declare, you glorify, you give them a little bit of hope in that relationship. So, pause the video, 2020, we're going Christmas caroling, alright? Let's do it, right now. Go! Alright, good job! I'm so proud of you. I know that some of you, that was way outside your comfort zone. And you're like, no way. I do not want to do this. But I'm proud of you. If you paused the video and you went and did it, good job. And if you haven't yet, do it. Do it, do it, do it. I think it will bless you. I know it will be an, an incredible conversation starter for you to try that 2020 Christmas caroling. Now, next activity. A little bit more crafty. Maybe something that you're like, I don't know if I got this in me. But whether you're by yourself or whether with your family or with a friend, I want you to do this. Are you ready? You're going to make your own nativity scene. Now, before you're like, what do you mean? Nativity. Yeah. I'm talking about Joseph and Mary, baby Jesus, the shepherds, the wise men, maybe even creating some sort of stable. But uh, you're not doing it with the little fancy set your grandma gave you or the one that you picked up from Hobby Lobby that's made out of cool crafted wood. No, 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 no. We're doing this homemade style. All right, we're doing this 
creative style. That means you gotta think outside the box. It means you take the little things in your house and you turn them into a nativity. Now here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna put this up on the on my right here. We're gonna put it right here, all right? You need to take this and you need to post the pictures with this hashtag to this. And if you're even brave enough, link it to our Facebook page, link it to our Instagram. We wanna see your creativeness. And what I mean by that is, Maybe uh, your shepherds are cotton balls. Maybe your wise men are uh, the biggest books in your house. However you choose to set it up, you set it up like a na normal nativity on a table, and you create every character using simple things that you have right now in your house at your disposal. Show me your creative nativity. Go! You can do it. All right, so proud of you. You went outside your comfort zone, you've gone caroling, you've done a craft creative project. I'm so excited to see those pictures of what you come up with to create your household nativity, a creative project that you just did. I'm stoked to see those pictures. The third thing and the last thing that I'm gonna ask you to do, a little bit different, a little bit more special, but again, it doesn't matter if you're by yourself or with your group, I really want you to do this. I'm gonna tell you a reason why. With our high school group, uh, years ago, we used to go camping to Arkansas. We went to this place called Lost Valley uh, near Ponca, and we would go on a trail that would lead to a cave. And this cave had a waterfall that was deep inside of it, over 100 feet inside the cave. We would go in, and we would, as a group, all get to this place, and it had a waterfall in this dark cave. Now, if it wasn't creepy enough already, there wasn't any light, and we had to use flashlights to get in there, but when we would get in there, we would all turn off our lights and we would sit in the darkness for a second. And then we would sing a worship song. We would sing a song to God and would declare it with our voices. And, and what we were trying to illustrate, and this is what I want you to do this morning or this evening or whenever you're watching this, I want you to light up a dark place with your voice. I want you to light up a dark place with the words of truth of the hope of Christmas. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Find a place that's a little dark in your house. Maybe it's the darkest place. Maybe it's the, the cellar. Maybe it's a closet with no windows. Maybe it's just a bedroom that's the darkest with blackout curtains. Maybe it's a bathroom. But go in there as a family or as a friend group or as an individual. And I want you to take with you, maybe it's the flashlight for your phone. Maybe it's a flashlight that you have separate. But go in there. And then I want you to play the next two songs that we have for you right after this video or right after the segment ends and I want you to play those in darkness and I want you to sing along with them maybe you cover your phone up as you listen but I want you to sing along with them in the dark and I want you to feel how the hope comes not from the light that is exterior like the sun or not from our exterior circumstances but from something that rises up deep within us like a dark world without any hope the hope of Christ sprang to life. And at the end of those two songs, I want you to turn that light on. And I want you to feel the intensity that would come when Jesus came down to earth in a dark place and the angels sang of his glory that peace is offered to anyone who would choose to put their faith in him and how the whole world has a chance to join in with that song. So, as a family, find that dark place as a participant of this, find that dark place and listen and sing these songs into that darkness. The hope of the world. Jesus.
Sweet hymns of 
Well, you've made it. I hope that was so encouraging uh, to you that I know it has been to me when I've had a chance to do that. Just like I said in that dark cave when you sang those, we sang those songs and it felt like it, the cave lit up when we had a chance to sing. And though the light itself was not there, our hearts and our minds were softened and we saw without our eyes that the hope was there and that we had nothing to fear. I hope this Christmas season, though exterior things and circumstances may not change, you can find that light, that hope. I want to encourage you before you take off. I know you've now caroled and you've participated in craft and you've sang these songs and I hope your heart has been lifted. I want to leave you with just a few words and thoughts of how Mary reflected on this. And it's one of those things that I think the one of my favorite verses from the Christmas story, the one that I always ponder and think about the most when I read through Luke chapter 2. And maybe you have it in a while and maybe that's the thing you need to do right now is just pause and read through chapter 2 of Luke and the Christmas story. That may be a great thing for you to do. But if you were here on Sunday or if you got to choose, if you chose to listen on Sunday to our um, last message on hope inside Christmas, you would have heard that I told you that Mary received hope. Joseph believed in hope. The wise men pursued this hope. The angels declared the hope. And then the shepherds actually went and found it. And we are actually called into it. We are invited into this hope. But when, when you read the story where that ends with the the shepherds finding this hope, it, it is this, this verse that I'm talking about is found right after that. And it always just sticks out to me. See if you can't figure out what verse it is when I read through just these few verses in chapter 2. Starting in verse 16, it says this, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph talking about the shepherds after they've been told by the angels to go and find this baby. The baby who was lying in the manger, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds were saying to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard and were just as they'd been told. Did you catch it? I know for me, it sticks out even then. It's verse 19. It says this, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. In my mind, that's what I want to do every Christmas. I want to see the way that the world continues to promise things that never fully develop or never fully bring hope, never fully bring joy, never fully bring peace, and never really fully display love. I want to ponder the way that Jesus brought all of that and encapsulated it in a way that lasts forever, that would lead my heart to think of things beyond what I see, that darkness does not overcome what light came to chase away, that death cannot defeat the hope that is on a cross and an empty tomb that Jesus came to lay his life down and walk out of. And I know for me, when Mary is pondering that, she is feeling the intensity of being a mom for the first time, but she's feeling the intensity of what God is doing in this small act of declaring to the world that he loves them, and he loves me, and he loves her, and he's telling the world that he's coming to provide hope, that peace is here and joy is to be had. Living display of God's full love offering life for me when i read that verse i want to have mary's posture i want to have that posture of watching and seeing and reading and hearing about what jesus has done and god has done and i want to ponder them in my heart and i want to them to go deep into my life and to live in response to that not just at christmas but all of 2021 and beyond i hope this Christmas season, as you sing some carols, make some memories, bring some light by declaring the truth of God, that you will store up the treasures of hope and that you will live in response, pondering them, not just this day, but all of 2021 and beyond. You guys, God loves you. He came for you. He is the hope of the season and for the future. Have a great and glorious day, man.